Brooklyn Independent Television. So we're here on Atlantic Avenue. We're not here for the Atlantic Antic. We got cars all around us. It's a busy day. I got all these people behind me. Why are they here? I mean, we're not giving away donuts. We're here for one thing. Did you know that there's a secret subway tunnel right underneath me? I didn't know that either. But this man did. His name is Bob Diamond. Well, how are you, Bob? Hi, Rich. Great to be here. Great to be here with you. So now, what's What's with the ladder and the manhole cover? Well, that's the entranceway into the world's oldest subway, which was built back in 1844, and I rediscovered it back in 1981. Now, how did you discover? I mean, were you, you know, you're walking down, you heard the ghosts, you heard a little woo-woo. I mean, what, how, how did this happen? Well, it was really by accident. I wasn't really looking for the tunnel, but it kind of just was looking for me, really, because I heard it mentioned on a radio show as part of a book about the assassination of Abraham Lincoln saying that the missing pages of John Wilkes Booth's diary were hidden in this old train tunnel under Atlantic Avenue and no one could find it. And laying next to John Wilkes Booth's diary pages was supposed to be a steam locomotive from the 1830s. So where exactly is the location of this manhole cover? It's at Court Street in Atlantic Avenue and the tunnel itself extends from Boreham Place to Columbia Street about half a mile in length. So it's pretty extensive. Yes. One main function was the, to connect New York with Boston. Then it also served a local transit function for Atlantic Avenue for anybody who wanted to go up and down the street. And then it also serviced the farmers who would send all the farm produce off of Long Island into downtown Brooklyn to be sold at the big market that used to be at the foot of Atlantic Avenue and Columbia Street. What was Atlantic Avenue like back then? Give us a vision. Well, back in those days, Atlantic Avenue was like the main commercial strip for, for the city of Brooklyn. And there were also some mansions along the street that belonged to some very wealthy people. And uh, the trains were good for developing the area because where the railroad went, economic development followed. Trains didn't have real brakes back in those days. Air brakes weren't invented yet. So if a train was going 30 miles an hour, it took about 800 feet to stop, which meant two long city blocks. So you can kind of imagine that a train didn't do well in, in congested city streets back in those days that were filled up with pedestrians and horse-drawn vehicles. So because of the accidents related to the trains not, have, not having brakes, they decided they wanted to get what's called grade separation and construct a, a, a sub-level to the city street to put the trains inside of. And that's the whole concept behind what a subway tunnel is about. Uh, we actually live in this building, and so we saw this happening every month and people lining up and uh, we asked about it. And It's in the middle of a very busy intersection with a lot of traffic, uh, so it seems pretty odd uh, to see these cones set up and people descending underground. Some people are, are really into the history of the tunnel. Some people have just walked by it in the neighborhood and are just have like a curiosity and want to see what is below the streets of their neighborhood. I mean, it kind of thrills me. I mean, I'm probably going to brag about this at the office tomorrow. So I'm, I'm pretty thrilled. <laughs> we usually have about 100 to 125 people per tour. And we try to limit that number um, to that amount because everybody has to come through the manhole and everybody has to leave through the manhole. So it takes a while to get people in and out of the tunnel. You, you go through the manhole cover, then you um, walk through this narrower part of the tunnel, you go through an opening in this wall, you go down some stairs, and you're in the main part of the tunnel. My name is Bob Diamond. I'm the one who discovered the tunnel back in 1980. It's the world's oldest subway. It was built in 1844 by the Long Island Railroad as part of a route between New York and Boston. Now, no one came in this tunnel from 1861 until 1980, in August, when I first got inside, except for some folks in the year 1916 who were looking for German spies supposedly making mustard gas down here. There was a big spy scare in the city because there used to be an ammunition factory in back of the Statue of Liberty, and in 1916 it was blown up by German saboteurs. I think we take our city for granted. You get a lot of out-of-towners that migrate here, and then within 12 months, 24 months, you know, they've, they've seen all the sights. So I think it's important we do these things so that, I mean, one, you know, so you understand your own city, and two, I mean, this is kind of like the kind of cool stuff that people look to New York, New York City to. So if you want to speak about your city with any knowledge, you should experience what people come here for. The tours happen on Sundays, usually at 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock. And when you come for a tour, you have to wear appropriate footwear. Like, you don't want to wear stiletto heels or, you know, anything like that. Or you don't want to dry cleaning only clothes. You know, everything will wash off, but you need to wear sneakers or boots. It's best to bring a flashlight. I talked to a couple of experts from the city. 
One expert told me, don't look for it because if it's there, it's filled up with poison gas. Another expert said, don't look for it because if it's there, it's filled up with exploding gas. And then another expert said to me, don't look for it because if it's there, it's filled up with water 14 feet deep. So the more these people told me not to look for it and told me more of these ridiculous things about why not to look for it, the more I got incessant to look for the thing. Bob Diamond has been doing this. This is his life passion. You know, he's been doing this since he was a, a teenager. You know, and he knows more about this than anybody in the world. <laughs> so, he, so having him give a tour and, and just hearing what he has to say and all the, the stories he's acquired from all the research he's done over the years as far as you know, Brooklyn history and history related to the tunnel is really, really fascinating. Now your tours, do they only occur on a certain day of the week? They're usually twice a month and if you want to find out more about when they're scheduled, look at our website, brooklynrail.net. We have the schedule posted. Well, I don't need a website. I'm going in. I'm looking for choo-choo trains. We are at the beginning stage of this tunnel. And if you see over my shoulder, there's another doorway, and it goes 10 feet down, and that's when we're going to join Bob and the rest of the tour. So I called up G.J. Tool, and I said to him, hey, what's up with this tunnel under Atlantic Avenue? And he said, oh, when I was a kid, I read in the newspaper that Murder Incorporated was dumping dead bodies down there, so I thought it would be interesting to put it in my book. So I said to him, well, do you know if the tunnel is there? And he goes, oh, I have no, I have no idea if it's there or not. And then he says to me, but you're a young guy. Why don't you go and try to find it? And I said, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> so that's how the whole thing started. Yeah, the indentation. Yeah. I'll be really looking forward to this DVD. This is amazing. I saw that the tunnel existed at one point and that it went from point A to point B, but there was nothing there telling what the nature of the tunnel was if, or, what, or the history of it, or if it's still there or not. So one of the librarians told me that they saved all the old newspapers that were printed in downtown Brooklyn on microfilm. So I went into the microfilm room and read all the newspapers printed in Brooklyn from the 1830s up until the 1880s. And that's where I got all these stories from that I've been telling you, from the old newspapers. Oh, I made it through. Just incredible. They didn't even get dusty. And I didn't have to use my Metro card. You know, I'm six foot two. If you're short, this is the way to go. Because it's really narrow. And it's really cool. It's only 65 degrees here. That was incredible. You guys have to check this out. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity seeing a wealth of history that's right underneath your nose, or under your feet. I love my borough. I love Brooklyn. Brooklyn Independent Television on the BCAT TV Network.